This is Democracy Now!, democracynow.org, The War and Peace Report. I'm Amy Goodman. As we turn now to the Nobel Peace Prize, officials announced this year's recipients early this morning in Oslo, Norway. The Norwegian Nobel Committee has decided to award the Nobel Peace Prize for 2018 to Dennis Mukwege and Nadia Murad for their efforts to end the use of sexual violence as a weapon of war and armed conflict. Dr. Dennis Mukwege founded the Ponzi Hospital in the Democratic Republic of Congo in 1999. The clinic receives thousands of women each year, many of them requiring surgery as a result of sexual violence. Nadja Murad is a 25-year-old Yazidi Kurdish human rights activist from Iraq. She was kidnapped and held by the Islamic State for almost three years. During her captivity, she was repeatedly raped, held as a sex slave, she said. In 2009, Dennis Mukwege appeared on Democracy Now!, along with our guest today, Eve Ensler. I asked him to talk about how he got involved in fighting against sexual violence. C'est une situation qui est particulièrement difficile. It's a particularly difficult situation. Euh, depuis dix ans, For the past 10 years, on se retrouvé que à l'hôpital on reçoit des femmes we have women qui sont non seulement violées, that, that are not only raped, mais elles ont été torturées. But they have been tortured also. Leur appareil génital a été littéralement has been literally euh, détruit. Destroyed. Et ce sont souvent de jeunes personnes. And they're all often young. Qui sont à, au début de leur They're at the beginning of their Et youth. Dans la condition, elle nous arrive, elle arrive dans une condition and they arrive in such a condition where urines and urine fecals are, les en are coming out, and it's very hard to take Mais, them euh, je pense que si nous sommes là, and take care of those aussi, women. Euh, But nous avons we are here uh, because we have hope, le monde peut écouter. and le we monde have hope that the world can compte. listen. Il est inadmissible it, it is unacceptable, it is unbearable that women are treated this way. Who is committing these crimes? Qui commet ces crimes? Ce sont des crimes qui sont commis par des groupes armés. Vous savez, groups. depuis les dix dernières années, For the past le Congo years, a été occupé the Congo par been sept armées. By seven armies. Et chaque armée, And each army, chaque groupe armé, each armed group, y compris même eh, eh, les, les forces armées congolaises, including the Congo, Congolese armed forces. Chaque groupe commet ses propres eh, Each group commits femmes. its own atrocities. Et, et je pense que c'est grave puisque finalement les femmes n'ont pas de recours. Because women have no hope. Qui sont supposées les protéger. Even those who are supposed to protect her. Elles sont en train de les abuser et les torturer. Abuse et les torture her. Talk more about the city of joy, uh, Dr. Mukwende. Euh, lorsque nous prenons en charge les femmes à l'hôpital, ce sont des femmes qui sont non seulement these men, these euh, qui ont des plaies physiques, mais elles ont wounded, aussi euh, des traumatismes physically, but are also traumatized profoundly. Et vous savez, on ne peut pas comme ça de And it's not possible, plaie, just like that, to cure them. Ça prend du temps. It takes time. Et parfois, Sometimes, a lot of time. Comme on ne peut pas les de we we cannot kick them out of the hospital. On avait besoin so we needed a place où les femmes peuvent rester where women can stay pour être prises en charge to be taken care of et pour, en fait, les and to, à une to train them sociale. Sur le to reinsert socially Mais aussi leur la and to give them the possibility and the ability to take care of themselves and to be able to capacité. fight in life because they do et, et have the, the capability of doing this. I have seen amazing transformations. Un, un dans les que je There is an enormous potential in women that I could, did not imagine. They arrive completely et, destroyed et, 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 et la, la and they fight. And they fight Mais between life après, and death. Vous les retrouvez avec une force But afterwards, incroyable. they have an incredible Et strength. La cité de la joie va leur the city of joy will give them this possibility to say what happened to them, to tell that they have, people have tried to destroy them, but we can tell them that they are strong and can fight. 
That's Dr. Dennis Mukwege almost a decade ago on Democracy Now! Today, he won the Nobel Peace Prize. Nadja Murad, the 25-year-old Yazidi Kurdish human rights activist, also won. Uh, this is Nadja Murad speaking at the U.N. in 2016. Before ISIS came to my village, there was nothing more important to me than my dignity, than my mother, my dear mother. And although she is now gone, my dear mother is with me here today, in soul and in spirit. She, along with my brothers and so many others, left this world too soon. And my life in Sinjal, as a simple Yazidi farm girl, is gone forever. The dreams and hopes of my whole community are gone. As you have heard, the night of August 3rd, 2014, everything changed. Daesh came to kidnap, to murder, to rape. This was genocide. It is that simple. In a matter of days, if not hours, thousands of Yazidis were killed and thousands of women and children were taken just because they were Yazidis. I was taken to Mosul with others. I was used in the way they wanted to use me. I was not alone. And perhaps I was the lucky one. As time passed, I found a way to escape where thousand others could not. They are still captive. Nobel Peace Prize winner Nadia Murad through a translator at the UN and Dr. Dennis Mukwege. We're continuing with Eve Ensler, the award winning playwright and author, founder of VDA. You just got off the phone with Dr. I did. Mukwege, I did. Um, speaking to him at the hospital in the Congo. Uh, talk about, and you've worked with both of them, Nadia as well. Mm -hmm. Talk about Dr. Mukwege's work and the work you both have done together in Congo. I just want to say, you know, Carl Jung once said that surviving this century will be holding two opposite thoughts at the same time, you know. And I'm thinking here we have the, ha the ka Kavanaugh hearings and Dr. Mukwege win. So, I, I, what I want to say is, is um, Dr. McWege and Nadia, I mean, it's so fantastic that they've chosen both a doctor who has been fighting to end um, rape as, as, a, as a weapon of war and a survivor of that, and that they've honored them together, because it's such a model of how men and women should be working together on these issues across the world. I've been working with—I met Dr. McWege in, in, in 2006, when I was asked to interview him for the, New, uh, for the UN. And when I met him, I was overwhelmed by the fact that his eyes were so bloodshot, witnessing all the atrocities and horrors he had seen. He invited me to come to the Democratic Republic of Congo to, so Vide could support his work. And I remember the first day I arrived at Pansy Hospital, and there were hundreds and hundreds of women, all of whom had been tortured and raped, all many of whom had been operated on. All of them were in the hospital under his care, under his love, under his his magnificent, radiant energy. And I stood there and I thought I had arrived at the end of the world. But there was this man, this towering man of grace and dignity and commitment and devotion, literally sewing up women's vaginas as fast as the militias were tearing them apart and desperately trying to get the word out to the world that this war, this economic war that was being fought for the resources, particularly coltain, which goes into our cell phones and, and computers, where militias are desecrating villages, having husbands rape daughters and sons rape mothers, so they destroy the families, the families flee, the militias take over the mines, and they are proxies for multinationals who then take the coltain back to us to go into our cell phones and computers. I saw this man who I had never seen a man like that. I had never seen a man who was literally giving his life to stop rape, to end sexual violence, to call attention to what rape as a systematic tool of war was doing to the women of Congo and would be doing if it were not curtailed to many more women throughout the world in many more countries. And I have watched him. I mean, I have had the privilege of traveling with him across this country, across Europe, across the world, Africa, where I have watched him tell his story over and over at the UN, at the European parliaments, at the White House, telling it and telling it and telling it, risking 
ostracization, risking criticism, risking his life. There was an assassination attempt on him, I think, four years ago, where they almost murdered him and murdered his—the driver who worked with him, kidnapped his daughter for 20 minutes. And now he is living literally under security at the hospital, no longer living in his home. He is a man of devotion. And I think at this moment, he is modeling a way of being as a man who is standing with survivors, <laughs> with us. And he said to me this morning, he said, um, this award is not just my award. It's an award for every survivor in this world, every woman who has been working for years to end this. And he said, we don't just need recognition. We need reparations. We need to end impunity, because impunity is allowing this to continue and continue. And as we're seeing at the Supreme Court, if there is no justice, if there is no accountability, this is how rape spreads. And we have seen that over 14 years you, in the Congo. You know, I could only think—you know, there was all sorts of discussions of the short list, and Dr. Mukwege has been on that list for a number of years. He was even—the the Nobel Prize officials were even asked about why this year. And you have to think about that, because among the other people whose names were being bandied about for this war today was President Trump, because of the North Korea issue and resolving that war. And you could only think, imagine, perhaps, someone said, but um, look at, I mean, 16 women have accused him of sexual assault, mm -hmm. and the Nobel Committee is dealing with its own controversies around sexual Indeed. assault and rape. And so they went in the other direction. And they honored Dr. Dennis Mukwege and Nadia Murad, who, who V-Day has also supported. Nadia is one of the most extraordinary, brave, grace-filled woman. And we had the pleasure of working with her and supporting Azidi women. And I got to meet her, and I did a piece about her. But she's so young. She has been through some of the worst atrocities. But she has turned her life to voting it, to not only saving the women and speaking out against the genocide against the Zidi people, but also becoming an incredible spokesperson and model for ending the scourge of sexual uh, violence and used as a weapon of war in armed conflict. And I think this award, hopefully, will signal to the world, and particularly to men, that there is a different way of being, you know, that we have to honor survivors, we have to honor women like Nadi Murad who stand up, and we have to say to men, there isn't a way you can act, you can devote your life to ending violence against women. You can delight, devote your life to working with and standing beside us. And you don't become less of a man. You become more of a man and more of a human. I mean, you only have to meet Dr. McGuaghy to see the light, to see the radiance, to see the love, to see the, the, the beauty that pours through that man who has given his life to the women of his country. You know, today, Eve, also marks the first anniversary of the explosive expose in The New York Times around Harvey Weinstein, mm. really the beginning um, of the Me Too movement, as it's being talked about today, though it was formulated well before that. Um, how far have we come? As you point out, um, the irony of this day, the Nobel Peace Prize mm. goes to those who fight sexual violence and to sexual violence survivors, and today, the vote of the Senate, uh, the first vote, the second supposedly as early as tomorrow, not clear, um, on whether Brett Kavanaugh, who's been accused of sexual assault by several women, will be confirmed to the Supreme Court? It's a good question, because it seems like the white men in power, um, the, that Republican Judiciary Committee and the Republicans are not getting it, are not waking up, are not feeling it, are not in tune. But the genie's out of the bottle. Women are out of the bottle now. They are never going back in. And I think whatever happens with the Kavanaugh hearing, it will never sit right with women of this country. It will never sit right well, with Well, there them. are elections within yeah, a month. Exactly. Not only elections, but I believe a fury is being unleashed in women, a fury and a determination that we will never turn back from at this point. And I just want to say to all survivors and women out there, this is the this is the, this is our crucible moment. And we need to, after whatever happens here, we need to rise and make sure the window that has been opened never closes again. It can't. Eve Ensler, I want to thank you so much for being with us. Award-winning playwright, author of The Vagina Monologues and so many other books, her latest in the body of the world, founder of V-Day.
This is Democracy Now! will link to her letter to white women against Brett Kavanaugh, um, or her opposition, For... <laughs> expressing uh, her opposition to Brett Kavanaugh, uh, but her letter to white women who are supporting Brett Kavanaugh at democracynow.org. When we come back, we head south to Brazil, where major elections are taking place this weekend. We'll speak with Pulitzer Prize-winning journalist Glenn Greenwald. Stay with us.